Okay, welcome back to the Western Oval. We're at three-quarter time. The margin is 16 points. It is 10 goals, 9.69. A mother worry. Bannockburn 7 11 53. And congratulations to our director downstairs. The scoreboard was right as we see McLean get the first kick of the final quarter here at the Western Oval. And that's probably bought by the Apco Easy Shops in and around Geelong. As we see Glenn Ward there, Gary it was, tries to burst his way through the pack. Lost the footy. Quick kick there from Basili up there to half forward in front. Oh, fingertip and nearly taken by Wentworth. Not paid by the umpire. As the big fella Bird it is. Yeah, Siddle got it across to him, Rob, with quick hands down to the forward zone. Wood couldn't take the mark. He's got support from Russell at the back. Can he gather? He cops one a bit high. He played for Dowser. He's got the free kick in the forward pocket. First goal crucial. A goal of Bannockburn will see them blowing wind up Mollawari's rear end. I'll put that nicely. A goal to Mollawari will see them have a little bit of a breather and establish a pretty handy break again. Yeah, well, let's just hope they don't relax and, uh, too much, Cookie, because... Uh, that, you're going to play four quarters of footy. Now, yeah, Russell, deep. You can see where he is. He's kicking this from inside the boundary line. His angle's pretty acute. He runs around on the left foot, tries to stab it at the goal mouth. Kelma McLean's up. Can't take the mark. Across the face of goal goes the footy. Poor kick, Daryl Russell. Should have at least scored, I would have thought, Ron. Off hands it goes. Boundary showing 15 metres around from the behind post. Monawari attacking early stages. Final quarter brought to us by Apco Easy Shops. Now we've got Goff doing battle with Bird. Goff in front. No one gets a decisive tap. Woodman at ground level goes off to the hand pass of Brooks. But uh, terrible footy because it's missed him completely out of bounds. Forward pocket. Yeah, both coaches of the, both these sides, whether they win or lose, will be working on some disposals practice through the week, I would well, think. Well, I mean, at the moment, mate, uh, I'd say Geelong West Cricket and Footy Club would be a Monty. All right, Ronnie Brain said that, not me, not Cookie. Here's little McLean at half back, he half forward. In fact, he gathers his charge down on the tackle, though. Ball is built free. Out of the centre, Flanagan, hand pass over the top. Long one, it goes towards Collager. He can't grab the footy. Got hot opposition there, coming out after him. In fact, and doing pretty well, Cal McLean tumbles the board towards the boundary line. And we'll have a boundary throw in on the centre wing. Time ticking away. Well, only 30 minutes, I'd suggest, this quarter will go, Ronnie. Yes, certainly. And they, Paddock Burn have got 30 minutes to turn the game around and get themselves into a grand final. OK, Goff again in front, but Pavlik thumps the ball 25 metres towards their goal. Picking it up there was Brooks. Hand pass underground there to uh, Woodman. Gets a quick kick and it's well marked there at the centre of the ground. And it looks like... Johnny Tillman. Johnny Tillman it is. Plays on quickly. The lead, dear Flanagan. A lot of purpose in that. Good grab and plays on quickly. Looks to the leader up the ground. Ball drops short. Back of the pack. Good work there from Timmy Ellis. But, oh, he's kicked it up and under. Makes it awfully hard for the big fella. It's bounced through. Barker got the handle, I think, Ron. Deary me. The big fella, Dave Barker, was up. Uh, he was having a bit of a duel there with Shane Friday. I think one of the... Certainly one of them touched, I think it might have been the big fella Barker. Well, a sigh of relief from the Mottawari crowd because, gee whiz, it bounced right through the centre. And unfortunately for the Tigers, the big fella Barker must have got a hand to it. Coach brings the ball back into play for the Warriors. The kick's too long for Wisely. Never looked like getting to it. Tillman did, though. Gary gives it across to John. John straightens up and goes for goal. Can he kick the first one of the final corner? It's home! Paddock Burner back in town! They certainly are. Johnny Tillman kicks his second. And uh, I think you'll find the Tigers will retaliate rather strongly after trailing a three-quarter time by 16 points. They've now bridged that gap a little further. And it's now... Let's have a look, Cookie. Nine points the margin. How crucial the miss from Dowser Russell at the other end, Ronnie? Certainly. OK, Apco Easy Shop scoreboard shows us eight goals, 12, 60 points on the board. They uh, got 60, that's 69 points. The other mob, yes, nine points the difference. You were right, Ronnie. Back to the centre. Can they get it out of the middle, Bannockburn? They can. Looks like Johnny Tillman, right foot, kick the half forward. Up goes, so oh, was it plenty and couldn't hold it. The crucial nice. stage is pushed away from him. Over the top, the hand pass towards Ward. It's cleverly tapped away from Ward. Back in goes Butch Shaw. He's tackled by Coot Shaw, gets the hand pass back. It went towards Weeks. He's claimed to the tackle. Burst through it, if you don't mind, well Weeks. Done. Got the hand pass away. Bath gives it across. Pilgrim straightens up with the right foot. Pilgrim's got the goal! Bang, bang, bang! Kick bang. Oh, oh, Ronnie Pilgrim kicks his second sensational goal of the day. Here come the Tigers! They certainly are roaring now in the final stages. I should say early stages of the final quarter as we see them right back in it. Three points the margin. And we've been travelling cookie, I would suggest, around about four and a half minutes of the final quarter. Surely there's not a gale blowing to the left of screen run, is there? Nope. 
Okay. 66 play, 69 on the up go easy shop scoreboard. Bannockman have kicked the first two goals of the final quarter. They trail Monawari by just three points. We tip the ring t a rib tickler, and we've got one. Certainly have another fine guest video production. Bounce down. Favours Johnny Tillman. Thumps it to, to Pavlik. Pavlik kick well smothered. And here's the rampage again. Flanagan. Cool in the crisis. Looks there to Barker. Well checked there, Shane Friday. Loses the football as the big fella. Flanagan comes in giving support. Couldn't handle the footy cleanly. It's out of bounds. 50 metres from the Bannockburn goal. Couple of great smothers there from the Bannockburn players. Just when Pavlik and another another Monterey player were going to get the ball clear. At Moose and it was. The smothers were terrific. Boundary throw in. Oh, rising high there, Bannockburn player. Got it. Uh, forward, here comes Friday, in a bit of trouble, got the hand pass towards Moosen, he lost it, Bath gets one back over the top, Coots elects to kick it off the ground, but it's sure all luck was. involved here, but Butch Shaw runs in underneath it and catches the footy. Has lifted, the, you can just feel it, the younger players have lifted their work rate, as Butch Shaw, yeah, over the mark, Berryman, you can't do that son, at 50 metres. Can't go over the mark till the umpire calls play That's on, That's exactly right. right. Deary me. Well, put sure now. He's going to kick the goal. That will uh, put Bannockburn Tigers back in front after Monawari blitzed the third quarter, opened up a big break. They fought back towards the end. But sure kicks the goal, and the little kids come out and give us the sign. Good on you, kids. <laughs> country footy is all about. And full points go on the board. Yep, we've got a ball game, all right, gentlemen. And uh, the Apco Easy Shop final quarter scoreboard now moves Bannockburn to 10 12 72. They lead Monterey 10 9 69 on the Apco Easy Shop scoreboard. Don't forget, one stop shopping that's got the lot at the Apco Easy Shops. In and around Geelong. Ronnie, North East Geelong. Geelong, North Geelong. That's it. Ah, they're out there where well, you are, of course, down there at Barwon Heads, and I'm going to go for Newcomb. Very the good. One. That's it. Take well, me two years. I've got them all now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, who's got them all? Banny Burn have got all the balls going for their way at the moment. Rockies 24 hour locksmith time clock. Seven and a half minutes going to the final term. Back into the centre. Andy Goff does the ruck work. Now, we've seen Bannockburn clear the ball into the centre twice. This makes three as that looks like sure again, is it? Left yeah, foot kick long into the forward pocket. Phillips uh, gets back. His opponent, Timmy Ellis, screaming for a free kick. Umpire having none of that. He said, Timmy, you kick a goal. I'll do all the umpiring. Thank you very much. And we'll have a bounce. we throw it in the fourth pocket. Left-hand side of the ground. Here's a shot of the crowd. Ready? There's a few here. Have a bit of a look now. Yes, good good crowd too here this afternoon. Enjoying the entertainment by these two great Division Two sides. As Brian Coughlin, the East Belmont legend, happy about the reserves win here this afternoon. The ball back into play. Pavlik knocks the ball down to the turf. McLean's at the base of the pack. Funny, he gets a hand pass out. Bass in there, fighting hard to held to him said the umpire I'm going to ball it up and uh, pardon me if you don't mind uh, Andy Goff and <laughs> little Glenn McLean he's going to do a bit of umpire on himself Glenn <laughs> good shot there an aerial view of the action as we see there Mick Bird can't control a leather boundary throw in and what a great shot there from our director in a, a little break Brett Revere down there good camera work there by Robbie Watson Goff versus uh, well, it doesn't verse anyone because it goes over the top of all players. Yes, Pilgrim can he kick another one? He tries to bend it back with the right foot. He's offline of this in time. Roddy Pilgrim has kicked two sensational goals and also three behinds this afternoon. It's another score, Roddy. They all count at this stage. Bannockburn go a little further ahead. Gee, Mick Walsley. He'd have to be stiff coming off the ground, coming on for Monterey, Danny Mortar. Well, we haven't seen him all day, Danny Mortar. It's, uh, well, might it's... be time for fresh legs, they feel, I think, out there for the Monterey uh, bench. Well, Jackson dies on the leather, ball half volley, and will be penalised. Yeah, good umpiring. Made no attempt to get rid of the footy. And I think you'll find with the footy now, just trying to pick it up, I think it's Timmy Ellis with the ball. It could be, he's doing plenty of umpiring, it might be Timmy again. <laughs> Yes, it is Timmy yep. Ellis. It's a long driving drop punt up to the teeth of Goal! Oh, magnificent oh, kick! Oh, 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 he's kicked it! Oh, oh, what a magnificent 60 kick! 60 metres! At least! Oh, they all went under it. The bit of pushing and shoving in the pack, and through she goes! And the Tigers, are they home, Ronnie? <laughs> Monterey have stopped. 
They Amazing game. Were. This, I mean, I rate Benny Burn off. I thought they were going to three quarters. You did, didn't you? You said they couldn't win. 11 13 79, Bannock Burn. Monowari, 10 9 69. And Bank Burn, Adele, what Monowari did in the third quarter, right? Yeah, good. Uh, sign of a good side, isn't it? There, where uh, a black like Bookshaw, who's been badly beaten for three quarters, is coming out. And I tell you what, it'll be a match when I hear this last. Pavlik knocks the ball to the ground. Johnny Tilman might be playing the centre, I reckon. Anyway, gets the ball down half forward. Coots knocks it away. Here comes Jackson. Long hand pass out wide. All right, the Basili. They need to get all these players moving again. Basili had the top little bit clean. Can he have a bounce? No, he straightens up and goes to the right foot. Kicks it to the man. Come out here. Rebounds. Gathers. Fires for goal. Long kick by McLean. Looking down there for Kel McLean, but at the back of the pack, Travers takes the mark. Yep, Murray Travers it is. Alex to go to the outer side of the ground, the offensive side. Looks there for the high flyers. Goff over the back, can't control it, but he knocks it forward. Good football for the big Bannock Burn Ruckman. Likewise, Jackson on hands and knees. Thumps the ball back from where it came. Pack of players have formed on that outer side, half forward flank. Monowari into attack. Bounce down. Good effort, Pat Jackson. Looked as though it was going to get right away again from Motawari's forward line. He held it in. Still a fair way up on their goal, though. Up goes Wally Pavlik. Knocks the ball to the turf. Oh, a few kick off the ground attempts there. One was from Pavlik. Hand pass from Weeks over the top. Stoop tries to knock it towards Berryman to his advantage. He goes in after Berryman, pushes out in front of him, loses the ball. Batty Byrne have got all the runners at the moment. Here's a kick up towards half forward. It's an up and under. Oh, two players sport. One another picked up by Ellis. He's had a flying shot at the goal mouth. 17 goal on players. Tell us, it's through. <laughs> Great goal, Timmy Ellis. And I tell you what, kicks his third. Oh, two good goals. Oh, an inspiring stuff from Timmy Ellis in the forward line. He's been a bit quiet, but he's come to life. And he's kicked Bannock Burn, I believe, into the second semi final. Into the grand final, in fact, because they're in the second semi final now. He's kicked them home in the second semi. It's 12 13 85. Monowari 10 9 69. And that is on the Apco Easy Shops final quarter scoreboard. Back to the middle. Pavlik now. No, it's Mick Bird having a run on the ball. Pavlik having a spell. As we see now. No, there he is, the big fellow, Waller Pavlik. They've got the two big men in the centre of the ground, Monowari. Unusual tactics for mine. As we see now, the ball driven forward. Well knocked away there from McLean. As we see him, the ball ricochet back to him. Now he has a bounce, steadies himself, breaks the Travers tackle. It goes short. Pretty ordinary footy for mine. Long bomb to the goal square would have been what would have been on the order of the list, I'd suggest, Cookie. I think Michael Wood was hoping for that one. He's down there getting cold. I reckon Bannock Burn have kicked the last seven or eight goals of the match, Ron. Not yep. sure how many they kicked in the late stages of the third quarter. I think they kicked three. And they've kicked five in this final quarter, is it not? Very good, Cookie. Very good indeed. Yes, they've kicked five. Bound on umpire back in a play. Weeks tries to tap the ball to the advantage of a teammate. Stoop tried one behind the ear. Lost it. Here comes Woodman. Picks it up. He didn't lose it. Kicks it down towards, uh, well, bouncing towards half forward now because it cleared that pack out. They come. Here comes, is it Tillman? Left foot kick good around play. the body. Uh, kicks it down to Gary Tillman. He marks. Chips it over the top. It didn't have enough carry on it. In trouble down there, Bath. Oh, lays a great tackle though, Bath. Oh, Timmy Ellis is on fire. He made him earn every bit of that. He's fired up. Anyway, the ball's gone away. The, the play's going on. There's still a bit of a, a dust up down the play. Here comes Weeks. He's gathered it. Kicked it straight into Styles there. Jackson knocks it back. He's in trouble. They're in all sorts of strife. Air pass over the top. Might have been a free kick over the shoulder of a mine. It's been paid that way to the bottom worry big fella. Big bird at half back. Yep. Tepper's getting a little bit frayed out there too out in these uh, middle stages of the final term. As we wait now, Mick Bird. Ruck raving for the Monowari side. Half back, Memphis side, drives it to the centre of the ground. Woodman, Tillman, it's a raffle. Oh, they've both spoiled each other. Back of the pack there. Christian Shaw, one of the better players in this afternoon. Ward, quick kick up there, looking for uh, Ellis. Can't control. Oh, hell with that, the ball. And should get the free kick at will. Yeah, he's given the wrong arm signal here again, if that's the case, Ron. No, he missed that one. He's given it to Jackson. Jackson's got the free kick. Ellis, a little bit unlucky for mine. Well, he's certainly sitting him on fire there, Timmy Ellis. He's having a, what you call a red-hot go. Certainly is. As, and Pat uh, Jackson, uh, who's defending pretty grimly this quarter. He needs a bit of help down there. Jackson, he's got the ball at half back. Shane Weeks stands the mark. Jackson looks to go short. He's got two options out here, and he finds the Brixton. Daniel Mortar takes the mark at half back. Mortar goes on the right foot. One plays three here. Monowari in all sorts of strife. They haven't got the runners. Here's one Hobie getting his belt into the play. Gets thrown as he uh, hand passes away. Cleverly elects to uh, get the hands down before his head hits that bike track. Roddy, save any damage and it's out of bounds. 
Barry throw in member side centre wing time clock ticking on 15 minutes gone on the Rockies 24 hour locksmith time clock as we see at the back of the pack there good work Burr but oh stolen by Ronnie Pilgrim weaves his way through the traffic feeds off to the run of Flanagan who kicks under pressure and luck of the Irish he's hit his teammate on the tent Johnny Tillman and uh, ho -ho, Danny Byrne doing it easy last quarter hoo hoo have they come from the clouds Bannock Byrne even Ronnie Brain had tipped, uh, who tipped Bannock Byrne, had given them away halfway through the third quarter. He looked at me and shook the head badly. Does that often. Here's the tumble <laughs> punt from Tillman. Not a particularly good kick. It's out on the full. I think you'll find it is. Too much carry on that and not uh, enough accuracy. And uh, the free kick going to go to Sean Phillips down there in defence. Yeah, I think still like Cookie, when you reflect back to that second quarter, Mottawari could think they're lucky stars that Bannock Byrne had kicked 1-6 for the term. Whereas in the final quarter, they're not quite as lucky because Benny Boone have rattled about six one or something. Five, haven't they? yeah, they're five two. Oh, well, here's the kick. This will bend out of bounds on the full. Bird gets under it. Oh, yeah, boundary umpires right on the scene there. He said it was touched off hands. No, he didn't. Carl, He's had two goes. Oh, Carl Jew's tried to cut him, well, has he? <laughs> Carl Fitke, uh, Carl showing Fitke, a bit of emotion. <laughs> yeah, Carl Jew was the one that was uh, taken from the ground to the missing link. Andy Goff, it was that was trying to. Uh, to do the uh, the conning of the boundary umpire. Bird goes up on the boundary throw and over the top it goes to Weeks. She loves to break through a packing claim. Loses the ball in the tackle. Bird goes in once more for Monawari. A lot of players over the football. Weeks trying to crash his way through once again. <laughs> He'd be a good rugby player, I reckon. <laughs> Weeks he, certainly he loves he it. He picks it up, puts it in there, tucks it under the wing and goes for it. But it's a ball up decision. Bounced out. Good favours Goff, but oh, good work, McLean. The ricochet to uh, Meeson puts Berryman under pressure. Hand passes to no one in particular. Wentworth, who's been great after half time for Bannock, on the left foot, goes up to Weeks and only took a great grab. Only Jackson was in the way. Feeds off the hand pass. Oh, the bouncer, cruel one for Siddle. McLean's in there with some strong work there, Ronnie Pilgrim. Now, Stoop, hand pass, looks for Boxer, and uh, Troy Hovey now gets it to Ooh. Jackson. Back in board there, he finds his teammate running through in Jeffrey Styles. He goes to half forward and, and finds Russell at half forward as Ronnie Brain called. He goes long, does Russell into the goal mouth. Michael Woods had a flying shot at him. He's flipped it up the side of the boot. It's out of bounds. It bounced and bounced and tumbled, and it's a boundary throw it in that forward pocket. They need Maybe they need Russell and they need water. They need a more to left at the present time. The Warriors, they're in a bit of stripe. 17 minutes gone. The Rockies, 24 hours left. Time clock. Yep, time ticking on. Ball now. Forward pocket for the Warriors. Need to convert here. Pavlik over the back of the pack there. Gary Tillman, the high flyer. Stoopy now, who looks as though he's, uh, well, probably carrying an injury because he's slowed right down. Boys, oh, oh, there's a mark. mark. It's Not a mark. Oh, he hasn't paid it. Oh, they'll be going crook now there. That was a mark for sure, Ronnie. Play on now. Here comes Ronnie Pilgrim. Been a good player here and there. Along the game, he kicks the ball out wide. Heads for the boundary line. Paul Wentworth the extra. Just let it go over. He heard the footsteps, I think, of two or three Monterey players behind him. He was, he was on a no-win situation there. But he grabbed the footy, and it's off hands for a boundary. So it was that a mark to Bryce Priscilli? Yep. You bet your sweet bippy it was. Boundary umpire throws it back into play. Monawari desperate for a score. Any score will do just to give them a bit of a snip. Stacks on the mill. Last man to get up, little Glenn McLean. Hands the ball back and Ronnie Pilgrim at the base of that pack holding it in there for Bannockburn. Pavlik does the ruck work versus Goff. Knocks to the ground. He's Flanagan. He's been good all day, Flanagan. Kicks it up in the air. Left foot. It's gone high. Hasn't gone far. Jackson flies from behind. Can't mark. Weeks is looking to grab it and run through another pack. It hasn't got to him yet. It might in a minute. Hand pass comes out. Doesn't get far, though. Harvey has a kick. Went about 1.2 metres. You wouldn't call that a step. It's a free kick. We bucked into this one. I don't know what it's for, but Russell takes it. Yep, he does, too, and plays on quickly. But stupid. Look where he's taken the footy. Right on the 50 metre line. Boundary line in focus he brings the ball back to the corridor where they should have gone in the first place as we see now it's all too late because the brooks from bannockburn mops it up nice and comfortably but sure over the top he goes and uh, the tigers will clear the football through carl jew who loves to run on the left foot this could be dangerous footy here bird's got it bird's yeah. got it got the hand pass over the top not a bad one either. Gives it the big fella. Straightens up. Pavlik and goes for goal. It's off line. Good effort from the big fella there, but dangerous play from Cal Jew. As uh, he had the chance, he just... Well, I don't know where he should have gone, Ronnie, but he shouldn't have gone to Big Bird. Well, no, he shouldn't have. And Pavlik, really, I mean, uh, he should have kicked it from where he was because he can kick the ball out of sight, generally. 
Back into play it comes. Member side of the ground, the Tigers have elected to come. 15 points the margin. Siddle keeps it in play. Pushes, he kicked the footy. I think you'll find he will get the footy. Oh, Woods kicked uh, the goal too, if you don't mind. Michael Wood turned around, played on and kicked one, but uh, the ball has to come back. There you are. Well, the, the margin, Roddy. 15 points. 15 points. Well, they've got to get a goal here to bring it back to just over the two goals, don't they? Really need to kick, get one now, and then the, the game's alight again. Yes, yeah, certainly. They've arrested the, uh, the slaughter of the Bannockburn early stages final quarter. Our first now... Siddle taking plenty of time. They've finally got the footy back to Jamie Siddle. He can kick a goal. He's going to have a goal, I think. Goes on the right foot. It's into the goal mouth. Plenty of players up. Probably about 14 out of the 40 out there. I'd suggest they had a bit of a purchase of that one. It's off hands. It's one point only to Jamie Siddle. Okay. Well, Carl Jew, the fullback for the Bannockburn side, chips it in. This is dangerous because it's put. Gary Till under all sorts of pressure. Michael Wood picks it up. He hesitates. Jackson got in his way. Needless to say, they've mucked it up, not a worry. And a nice mark. Last line of defence there, Murray Travers. Yeah, they could have done better on that occasion, I thought, not a worry. The kick comes out. Gary Till will mark this as sure as Christ made little apples, and he does so in the back pocket position. Been a fine contributor all afternoon, Gary Till, and his aerial exploits have been excellent, Ron. I thought you'd agree. I just think you all a bit longer. <laughs> OK. Up goes Mortar from behind and punches the ball to the ground. Went in after it again. Kelvin McLean lays a tackle. The ball comes out towards Wentworth in the half-back flank position. He keeps it close to the boundary line. His kick is smothered by Kel McLean. It looks to be limping a little. It goes back towards Berryman. He uses a bit of pace, Berryman. Can he open it up for Molawari? He goes long to the forward zone. Back there trying to take the mark. McLean does well. Hand pass to Basili. He straightens up on the left foot and goes for goal. He's up line one point only when they badly wanted a team but the price facility has missed for the left foot. Yep, they really needed that one badly because, yeah, their scoreboard tells the story. Up Co Easy Shop, final quarter scoreboard. Uh, it moves them now to 10 11 71, trailing Bannockburn 12 13 85. 22 minutes have nearly gone to this final quarter. The ball kicked back in. That looked like Woodman taking a nice mark there outside the defensive 50. He goes on a right foot. Heads out to the far side of the ground, the outer side. No mark taken. College is through it away when tackled for mine. And uh, the umpire has seen that one. Free kick going to go here to Troy Hovey. Hovey now, outer side of the ground. Just elects to drop it short. Ronnie Stoop makes position centre wing and doesn't let him down. They've turned it around a bit, might worry, really, but they can't kick the goals they play so badly need. Yeah, they certainly look for uh, Russell and the uh, ball well knocked away from him, Clinton Shaw. Bursting his way through Mickey Bird. Great inspirational stuff, Bertie. Up there looking for Michael Wood. Badly beaten on this occasion. He was In held front. out cleverly by Carl Jew, Ron. Yep, Murray Travers did and well. Travers was able to take the mark. Good effort, Carl Jew. Just put himself between the ball and Wood, who was trying to get a leap at it. And Travis kicks it out. Daryl Russell doesn't have to leap. He stands firm and takes this mark. He chips it over the top. It's all right, too. He's got it across the styles. He kicks it to the pocket. And the Woody takes the mark in the fourth pocket. He's on a very acute angle. Now, let's just see if he can repeat the dose he did just a minute ago when the ball had to go back. Because he did turn and kick from there, truly, for the Monowari side. He did too, Ross, but he's having a set shot on this occasion. Oh, the kick's not bad either. Stripping away, he might have got it home. Let's wait on it. Oh, it's a goal. Michael Wood kicks goal number, I think that's seven. about seven. Oh, they're not out of this yet. Time on's about to start. Might have started by about half a minute, I think, on the Rockies clock. Michael Wood kicks his seventh. Mola Wally are still coming. And we'll get the, uh, the scoreboard up for you. Here it is, 85 plays, 78. Just seven points the difference on the Apco Easy Shop final quarter scoreboard. Well, prediction now, Ronnie Bray. We've had a few predictions through the day. You want to change your betting now? Yeah, no. Panic boom will win. Okay, back into the centre. Up they go. Basili knocks the ball to the ground, but it's taken away there by Flanagan. Out of the centre. He gets up and under this one. A right foot kick up the woods. Half forward. Free kick whistle on play. Gone. What a worry's way, I think. Yeah, against Butch Shaw. Moose Mason is it going to take this one? I think you'll find it. Yeah. At half back, he's going to move the ball quickly. You can bet that in. that'll happen. He's gone out wide, looks for Glenn McLean, who has to catch this. He's under pressure if he doesn't. He does take the mark. And is that 50 metres? It's not because the umpire was looking the other way at the, at the time he'd been into it. You wouldn't believe that. <laughs> OK, up goes McLean to half forward. Mark being paid here to Mick Bird, who's had a pretty good final 10 minutes. As ticker shows us the City Bank are sponsors of the GDFL. <laughs> we'll stick with the play. Hand pass to McLean. Down the ground goes McLean. They need a mark down there. Punch.
Pitched away by the defenders. Bannock Bear weeks as in there. Got the hand pass out. He's thrown to the ground by Wood. Back it comes towards Little McLean. He's thrown to the turf. It'll be a boundary throw in. Half forward flank position. Monowari going into attack. And they're trailing by seven behind. Yep, not much in this game of footy at Nearly all. Nearly 25 minutes, Ronnie. Right? Yeah, just about into time on. Plenty of footy left here this afternoon. Over the top, uh, the big fella Pavlik gets it down. Hovey collared. Loose ball, Shaw now. That was Christian Shaw. Butch, as he's known, but he's kicked a poor one and well marked at half. Back there from the Monterey side, Sean Phillips. He's elected to take the odds to it. He's gone looking for Coots who couldn't mark. Was punched away. Yes, the kick in a hurry. He's pulled down off the foot. He couldn't get the boot to it. Monterey taking the chances. They have to, though. Jackson now goes out the pacey Berryman. He straightens up Berryman. He kicks it long to the forward zone. Wood sitting back over the top. Jude, did he infringe? No, play on as they call. Michael Wood at ground level. Trying out to gather the footy. Weeks is in there, battling hard. Willie Steep got a hand pass from Monterey. No one else could grab it. Wentworth grabs it. He's tackled. He holding it under him. Did he not? Or did he? He said you've got a free kick, son. Well, crucial free kick that one, our brain. Can you run me through the <laughs> reasons? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Wentworth got the free kick. Unbelievable. Flanagan Sharks is at the back of the pack. He spins and kicks with the right foot. still drop and tap out there. Birds up, can't mark. Pushed up the footy styles. Here come Monterey. They haven't given up. Kel McLean. Right foot kick into the forward zone of the forward pocket. No mark taken. Weeks. He'll have a run. Watch this. Crashes his way through the pack and away he goes. He saves the Matty Bay Tigers on the right foot. Yeah, the dominator goes out wide. Finds uh, the good, good play there. Gary Tillman over the top. The college who loves to kick a goal on the run from 40 metres. And it goes bang, bang, bang. Lovely football, Tigers. And a very nice goal off the boot of the dashing wingman. Kicks his second, Wayne Colliger. And that is just about the sealer for mine. As we see now on the Apco Easy Shop final quarter scoreboard. Bannockburn moved to 14, 13, 91. They've now snuck away to 13-point leaders over Matawari, 11, 12, 78. I think that's the one they wanted, the steadier. They're looking dangerous, Monterey, I thought. They just needed one more grab in front of goal, and they're really going to set this game alight. But I think that'll steady him down. That's McLean trying to get the ball in the centre for Monterey. He's hotly pressed there by Andy Goff. The ball forces out by a little Berryman, who's been handy. Hand passes over the top, looking for Moose, and he gets one in the back from Goff, plans the call. Yeah, umpire, let it go. Little hand pass out of the pack towards Collager and kicked that last goal. He's tackled by Berryman. Hovey's got it at half back for Monterey. Tumbles a kick round the body. It's a good one. And Glenn McLean gathers quite nicely, if you don't mind, at centre wing. Yeah, it goes to centre half forward. Pavlik takes a nice grab and he'll now drive the Warriors into attack. Kicks it along the lead. Looks there for Dowser Russell, who doesn't let him down and takes a nice grab. 50 metres out from goal and now needs to convert for the Warriors. He's got to have a shot. No matter what happens, he's got to have a shot. He comes in, long kick into the goal mount. Wood sets himself across the face of the pack. Picked up here by the Moose. The Moose has fired a goal. <laughs> it's not over yet. The big fellas come down from the fence and bobbed it through like a rover. Yeah, great goal, Moose. And he'd love to watch that replay, I'd suggest, again and again and again. Oh, that'll and a take. very handy goal for the Warriors as we've just approached uh, time on. And there's still plenty of football left here this afternoon as the Apco Easy Shop scoreboard now moves the Warriors to 12 12 84. They trail Bennett Burn by seven points 13 13 91. Shout out the crowd there, appreciating the game since half time. It has been a beauty. Before half time, we're all going to sleep. 28 minutes gone on the Rockies, 24 hour locksmith time clock. Here Last comes the one. Warriors! Here comes McLean, is it out of the centre? Right foot kick. You've got to run to catch this young fella. He tries to tap the ball further and field with Styles. Could knock it over the top, looking for Alza Russell. Off hands. Good defensive work there from Clinton Shaw, who's been pretty handy for Bannock Burn in that last line of defence. The ball is between. Uh, well, it's almost on the centre wing, slightly the attacking zone of Monterey. They need to get a goal from this forward surge. They certainly do, Cookie. Now, ball with McLean. That's Glenn as the senior DVC. Flanagan, to Flanagan, through, Flanagan, 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 too good. Kicks it to Goff at half forward. Couldn't take the mark. Got a little bit of support here. Johnny Tillman does well. Comes out, kicks it out of the forward zone. Who's underneath it but Gary? Don't they combine well, those two? They seem to have the radar out. As Gary Tillman marks, chips it in short. And the mark has been taken with a very big smile on his dial there on screen there is young Bath. Yeah, your mate, Roddy. He's taken the mark. And Timmy Ellis is just going across to tell him, this is an important kick, son. You don't miss these. He'll drill this. He's only, let's have a look, 20 metres out from goal directly in front. He's already kicked one. He's taken his time too. That's good experience from the young here, shoulders here of Paul Bath. Takes his time. He's already kicked one. 
the drop punt, it looks good. All clear from the several car umpires as we just check now on the school book. Yet two goals, Paul Bath. 14, 13, 97, Bunnyburn, Mullawarri, 12, 12, 84. And, uh, well, we've said it before, we'll say it again. That might be the sealer. But I tell you what, the Modern Warrior have showed some character here and they just keep fighting on. Well, it's been an interesting, funny sort of a game. Nothing happened for the first half. Then Modern Warrior went berserk. Then Bannyburn went berserk. Modern Warrior got it back. Now Bannyburn have answered again. Big Bird knocks the ball out of the centre. Long punch from Bird towards half forward at ground level. Here comes Flanagan once again. Gee, Bernie, good player. He fathers the ball. He kicks it up towards half forward. Up they go. Day Mark taken at ground level. Doing well. Modern Warrior repel this to... Attack, it goes out the centre way. Mark taken by Styles. Oh, he kicks it, gets flattened out, re kicked it by Flanagan. Russell is out on this occasion by the young boy there in uh, Clinton Shaw, who six quarter times done pretty well on Dowser. And he takes this mark at half back. Here he goes, right foot kick. Oh! Into the centre of the ground. Here's a good mark, and he hurt himself as he came down. I'll pick him up. It's got to be Gary Tillman. No one else takes him like that. That was a great mark, and he hit the ground pretty hard, Ronnie. He's very clever. He just steadies, gets the breath, chips it over to Pilgrim. Ronnie Pilgrim straightens up, goes for the big spiral. Down to the forward zone they go. Almost a mark to John Tillman. Bird's pulled up the foot. He didn't have it. In goes Morton. He's in stripe, knocks it back towards his teammate here in Little McLean. McLean goes on right foot, and that's the Kel McLean. Takes the mark at half back, and Ronnie Pilgrim stands the mark. Yep, now McLean's kick into the centre of the ground there. Puts here Moose under a bit of pressure. The ball now won't sit for weeks. Chipping in now Hovey. Can he drive them forward? He's trying hard. Yes, he can. Long bomb up there looking for Dowser Russell in front. Back of the pack. Working hard. Russell again gets the footy somehow, somewhere. Plays on quickly. Looks up the big fella. Pavlik should have swallowed that, Walter, but couldn't do so as we see their good desperate football from the Tigers and they'll now defend the Grimley. Yeah. Shaw got it back there. That was the young Shaw. Got it back to Travers. He heads for the far side of the ground. Doesn't matter where you want to head, Murray Travers. The Sirens go here at the Western Oval. The second semi-finals over and Bunny Burn have earned themselves a passage into the grand final. They certainly have. And uh, the final scoreline here... Bannockburn, 14-13-97, have defeated um, a very gallant motto warrior here, I must say, 12-12-84. Margin 13 points. They kick seven goals, two in the final quarter. Batty burned to win the match, Ron. There you are, Cookie. I'm not a bad judge. I said 21. I was only seven points out, so uh, I think I would have taken the money here this afternoon. Yes, I would have. Yeah, you're, uh, you're the nearest uh, correct entry, I think. Nearest correct entry. Again, the accurate one, Barassi. A fresher, whatever you like to call me, Cookie. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I can't call you that. We're on tape. I know what I like to call you. <laughs> uh, okay, 14, 13, 97 on the Apco Easy Shop scoreboard. Monowari 12, 12, 84. They've got a front up the, the Jolly West Cricket and Footy Club next week. They'll have a few sore boys too, I can tell you. It'll be a pretty good game. Yeah, it certainly will be, Cookie. Just like to uh, give goal kickers, if you like, while we're trying to do our better players and wrap up here. How are you going to do votes on this game? <laughs> That's Unbelievable, easy. it was. I can give some goal kickers for you if you like. That's not a problem. Because Michael Wood kicked seven goals for Mono Warrior. And, well, he set him a light in the third quarter. Kicked five goals for the quarter. Got one in the first quarter, one in the final quarter. But, uh, gee, well, he did his bit. Does he get a vote? He kicked seven goals. Darrell Russell kicked two goals. One goal to Bryce Basili, one to Glenn McLean, and one to Paul Meeson. And for Bannockburn, single goal kickers, Big Dave Barker, Shane Andrews got one, Butch Shaw got one, two goals to Paul Bath, two to Wayne Collinger, two goals to Ronnie Pilgrim, they were both sensational. And Timmy Ellis kicked three goals, I think they're all in the final quarter, and he turned the game around for Bannockburn when it looked to be a little bit lost. Yes, yeah, certainly, Cookie, and uh, it's, uh, as you said, a very tough game to give votes on, and uh, when you look through at the start of the game, I thought the way that Corey Flanagan started and Clinton Shaw, I uh, thought, gee whiz, these boys are going to be in for a real great uh, game of footy. Uh, Corey, consistent, but probably not his normal dominant self. Clinton Shaw, I was very impressed with across half-back, and uh, I'll actually give Clinton Shaw a vote here this afternoon for uh, four consistent quarters of defensive football. For Here's the boys on screen, Ron. They look pretty happy. They certainly do. I'm going to give two votes here this afternoon, Cookie, to uh, a Mulawari player who I thought performed admirably in three of the four quarters. Heart of gold, and that's the number 30, Guernsey, in Glenn McLean. Great consistent four quarters, and he was a real red-hot goer for the Mulawari side here today. Best on ground, well, it's a bit of a raffle, Cookie. You give it to a couple of players, but I'm going to go for the little racehorse. He burrows his way in and sets up a lot of football for the um, Bannockburn side. I'm going to go to Shane Weeks. Congratulations, Shane. you got my three votes here this afternoon. Yeah.
Well, everyone sees the game differently, and we were watching two different ones today, evidently. Because <laughs> I'm nothing like you, Ronnie. Good. I'll give a one point to Michael Wood from uh, Monawari. He wasn't a brilliant player, but he kicked five goals in one quarter to set them up with a winning chance. He kicked uh, another two or three. They kicked seven goals, I think, for the afternoon. Well, I guess if we had a bit more support down forward, they might have won, and they just didn't have enough goal kickers. And uh, I gave him a point. Of, I didn't think he was a brilliant player. That I just thought, you kick seven goals, you've done your job yeah. if you're a full it's forward. It's a good effort, isn't it? I gave him the two, the one point. I gave two votes to uh, to Gary Tillman, the number 19 jersey for Benny Byrne. I thought he played a great game all day. His, his aerial work is just supreme. But he, he must have taken 10 or 15 marks today, and a lot of them under pressure. And, uh, and he used the ball well and brought his brother John right into the game also. And I gave three points to the bloke you said didn't go right on the game. I thought Corey Flanagan was probably the best four-quarter player on the ground for the afternoon. For Benny Byrne and... Uh, Corey, I thought your game was up to your normal standard, and I gave you three points. Your second vote, get it was uh, Gary Tillman. Gary Tillman. And one vote to Big Big, Big, Big Wood at full forward for Monawari for his effort in kicking seven goals this afternoon. <coughs> OK, well, now, that's put a spanner amongst the works. Uh, I think our little man, Brett Revere, downstairs, he may have enough time to give us some votes, or uh, we might even mention to uh, Neville Whitley. You're best on ground, Neville. Travers in the back pocket. Uh, three votes for uh, Neville Whitley. Two votes, uh, Neff. That's you, most important. Put you under the hammer, mate, because we disagree as well. So, uh, we, we, well, yeah, good boy, Gary Toolman. Thank you very much. And y your one, one vote. One Stoopy. Ronnie Stoop, good on you. Thank you very much. And uh, there we are. An exclusive from on screen there. The president of the GDFL. Thank you very much, Neville, because... Uh, our little man downstairs pu pushing buttons uh, this afternoon under a bit of pressure and doesn't know a lot about football. <laughs> Hartley Coop, but we can't find Hartley. It's too cold for Hartley. Maybe so the, thanks, mate, for your food. the bar, Hartley. Yeah, so there you go. <laughs> well, on the basis of those votes, gentlemen, it looks like for Gary, Ryan, Tillman. Gary Tillman is judged best on ground here this afternoon by the guest video and, of course, executive of the GDFL here this afternoon. Yes, and Gary equal Tillman. then would be Corey Flanagan, Murray Travers and also uh, Shane Weeks. Certainly. So well, it's, your, it's your position, Ron. I think you can do divide that up. Corey Flanagan. <laughs> Corey Flanagan gets two points. And the one point? Murray Travers. Murray Travers. Well... The player you go three votes to, you haven't even put in, Ronnie. Shane Weeks will run straight through you the next time he sees you. And won't that be sensational? That'd be like Mount Everest hitting Mount Kosciuszko. <laughs> Good on you. Apologies there to, uh, to Weeksy, but, uh, well, I thought he was very consistent. But I suppose when you're looking at 3-2-1, and one, consistency doesn't always get the votes. But, uh, well, I'm going to give uh, Shane Weeks the Best Team Man Award. Because, I'm just going to uh, say you might put him in for the Doug and Julie Pipe Building Award, Ronnie. Yeah, yeah we've got to thank uh, other sponsors of the Guest Video uh, team for the 94 season of GDFL. And, uh, yep, Doug and Julie Pike are one of those uh, great companies. They're builder joiners uh, in Geelong West there. And, uh, well, if you've ever got any building requirements, give Doug and Julie Pike a call. That's P-I-K-E. <laughs> as uh, we see that, yeah, congratulations, Shane Weeks getting the Best Team Man Award from the Doug and Julie Pike Joinery Company. Well, Cookie, thanks again for another fine, uh, enjoyable afternoon of uh, country GDFL football. It's a and, great uh, head, Ron. It's, a, it's, it's sensational, isn't it, really? <laughs> yeah, good radio head. But, uh, yeah, all in all, it's been, uh, after half-time, a great game of footy. It was here. a shocking first half and a great second half. That's what it was. Well, let's just have a look at the program. And we saw eight goals, 15 scored in the first half of football. That probably explains uh, one of the reasons why it was pretty awful. After half-time, we've seen uh, 10 goals by Bannockburn and eight by Matawari. So that's 18 against eight. So it was a much more fruitful last half of football here this afternoon. Uh, and I've got a message for David Cook, the Matawari coach. Yep. I've got a message for you. Just put me on screen, Brett. I want to tell him this message. There he is. David Cook, my namesake. Get your boots on, son, and play next week. They needed some leadership and they needed some burst in the forward line. Yeah, I'm pretty sure, Cookie, that your namesake, the 28 Guernsey and coach of Monawari, will play in the preliminary final against Geelong West Cricket and Football Club next week because I reckon it's going to be a great game and we've got to congratulate the umpires of course here today and Greg Neal and Nathan Ashton for their uh, great work here representing the Geelong Football Umpires League in the second semi-final for Division 2 GDFL for 94. Likewise, Baby Cook, co-commentating yours truly, 
the professor of country footy, Ronnie Barassi, Brian. Don't forget, though, Robbie Watson, Sean Cannon on camera, and Brett Revere doing a mighty job downstairs. As our normal director, Noel Fanning, decided to go down a kid in your park for the afternoon and capture the Falcons on videotape. And watch the cats in the afternoon, I guess. So it's been a very busy day again for guest video. Hope you've enjoyed the call as what we have in bringing it to you. Another fine guest video production.